Hey everyone, today I've got my friend Heather visiting me and we just made a whole lot of pasta. Uh, this is a peachy pasta from Tuscany. It's a big fat hand rolled pasta. And with that, I made a lovely roasted beet sauce. I went to a restaurant in Tuscany one time outside of Florence and uh, told them we were vegan. And they made us this beautiful peachy pasta, peachy P-I-C-I, which is the traditional pasta of, of uh, of Tuscany with a beet sauce, a roasted beet sauce, and I loved it. I, mean, I, I thought it was so unique. I never had a pasta like that. So I went home and I tried to replicate it, and that is what we're going to make today. So it's beautiful. I mean, imagine for Valentine's Day. All right, so we're gonna make pasta the cheating way. I have a, re a recipe for a 15 minute rustic pasta in my homemade vegan pantry. Um, so we're, gonna, we're not gonna do it the way the nonnas in it Italy do it right on the, you know, you make a mountain of flour on your cutting board and then you make a well and you put your water in and you kind of do this thing. We're gonna do it the way most Americans would do it. Is that? It's a little faster, a it's, little easier. It's <laughs> easier, everyone's got a food processor, yeah. so. Okay, so we're gonna start out with three cups of some kind of flour. Now I'm using two cups of semolina flour, which is typical for pasta made out of durum wheat and one cup of just all-purpose flour. But if you don't have semolina, you can just mm -hmm. use all-purpose flour. No problem whatsoever. Now, today we're making peachy pasta, which is a traditional, really fat noodle from Tuscany. And they do one thing that's a little different. They add about a tablespoon of olive oil to their dough. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna add a cup of hot water. And this kind of works the gluten faster, so, mm -hmm. and it will look like it's never gonna form pasta, but it will. So I'm gonna turn this machine on. Ooh, that's fancy. Now what's gonna happen is, at first, it's gonna form these little beads, and it's gonna all come apart, and you're gonna go, it's, oh my God, I screwed it up. But somehow, it all pulls up, pulls uh, together, and forms a ball in the center, and that's when you know it's ready. Okay, you notice it's sort of coming together, beginning to form a ball. We're gonna let it go another minute or two. All right, I think it's ready. Wow. As you can see, I got this nice kind of, nice dough, actually. And it's not like pastry dough, you don't have to worry about over blending it. No, 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 no. Uh, you you want to work the gluten a little bit yeah. so that it all holds together. And Miyoko, you know yeah. me, I love to bake. Mm -hmm. And with baking, sometimes it can be a little bit of a challenge figuring out how to substitute for egg. Mm -hmm. But the pasta, it's easy, right? You don't need the egg at all. No, it comes you do out not. Beautifully. No, it comes out beautifully. The semolina gives it a beautiful golden color. Yeah. But if you didn't have semolina, you just had all purpose flour or double zero flour, it works perfectly as well. In fact, if you just think about all the noodles around the world, most of them don't have the egg anyway. Yeah. So they're, it, they're inessential. Um, and you know, they were, they were added to add richness as the country became richer. But traditionally in Italy, if you go to most parts of Italy, um, tr they didn't have that many eggs that you could use. So yeah, most pasta yes. off the shelf doesn't have egg. That's Yet right. when you look up a pasta recipe, it always says egg. Yes. Now, in Italy, as I, in Italy, as I understand it, fresh pasta is only eaten on Sundays, and then they cook regular pasta. They just you know, dry pasta the other days of the week because it takes too long. Um, while we're yakking, I'm just sort of patting this out. Uh, we're going to cut it into force, and I'm trying to make it as square as possible. So we're just going to let the dough rest to let the gluten rest for a little bit so it makes okay. it easier to roll out. And I'm just going to cover it with that. We'll just let it rest for 15 minutes. In the meantime, we will make our beet sauce. So I didn't, it's Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> and you can make this for Stuart. So, mm. ah, what's that Disney film, you know, the Lady and the, Lady Tramp. And the Tramp, you know? Mm. So we're going to make these fat noodles and they're going to okay. be enrobed in this beautiful crimson red beet sauce. Let's so do it. it. Let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So I've got these beets here. They don't look very pretty. They look extremely wrinkled. That's because I roasted them for hours and hours. Okay. Uh, because what I wanted to do is just like caramelize them and get them as 
really sweet, sweet as yeah. possible. Yeah. So you can help me okay. uh, peel these guys. These were about twice the size when I got started. So it basically concentrates all the flavor, all the sugars, and just renders this lovely, lovely uh, sweet concoction that's going to puree into a lovely sauce. I said lovely like four times in that sentence. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. I'm having a hard time peeling mine. It does not want to come undone. Well, you can use a it's knife if you well have to. It's been very well caramelized. Now these are roasted at 350 degrees for about two and a half hours, something like that. And I, I didn't cover them, no salt, no oil, nothing. You just stick them in the oven on a tray and uh, go about your business until they look all wrinkled and shrunken. Kind of like shrunken heads. <laughs> they did not look attractive in that container. No, no. I, I think um, a mistake a lot of people make when they're cooking root vegetables is they don't let them cook long enough to let the sugar come out. Yes. Come out kind of mealy and bitter. Yes. Um, have you done nice. three and I've done one? Yes. I'm embarrassed. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have sharper I think fingers we're good, than you. I guess. We're almost done. Okay, what are we doing now? So we we're going to work. Chunks of pasta. Yep, so now we're going to make the sauce funky looking beets. All right. All right. So I'm going to add these beets to the blender. This is a 15 second. Once you got the beets going, the rest of it is like literally 30 seconds. The garlic stone is out. The garlic stone <laughs> is out. This is how I get my frustrations out each day. Otherwise, uh, you know, you first told you us watched. about the garlic stone, uh, in that cooking class. Ah, yeah. did I? You okay. Did. Well, you know, I have this for, you know what? These last forever. Like you it's never a stone. have to replace I mean, You never have to replace no it. Mechanical it doesn't parts. break ever. So, all right. So we're going to get the garlic in there. Six to eight cloves. You can add as I, much as you like. If you, yeah, you don't want to put too much in there. All right. Then we're going to add some olive oil. I'd help you, but I hate okay. peeling garlic. It's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> I do not mind at all. All right. So you now I'm going to add. Do you want these? Do you want um, the last one or no? Ah, sure. Why not? Now we'll just compost that. All right, now I'm going to add about a third of a cup of olive oil out of my beautiful Umbrian olive oil. Con this is going to take forever, pouring olive oil like this. All right, forget it. I'm going to just get the, <laughs> the thing itself. I try to do things for show, but it doesn't always work. All right, so now I'm going to add some olive oil. All right, that's probably good. Ah, there, another glug. This is why cooking with you is so much fun. You're like, just give me the big bottle. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to add some, some sea salt. And the garlic and the sea salt balance out the, the caramelized sweetness mm -hmm. from the, the beets. I'm getting all these flavors. I got the sweetness, the garlic, mm -hmm. the olive oil. So we're gonna set the, the sauce aside until the pasta is ready. And all we have to do is toss the pasta with the mm -hmm. sauce and heat it up, L thin it out a little bit with the pasta water. And we're gonna serve it on some, some um, well, if we had beet tops, I would saute the beet tops, but they often mm -hmm. just toss them. I don't mm -hmm. understand why grocery stores don't sell entire Beets with the beet the tops beet greens, are delicious. Yeah. The beet greens are delicious, mm -hmm. but they throw them away, which is really, really sad. All right, so now we're gonna roll off the pasta. It's been sitting for about 15 minutes or so. And you notice this is still nice and thick. Mm -hmm. I'm just cutting off pieces of it. And we're gonna roll this by hand, make long strings of pasta. So you press and you pull. You press and roll your hands out like that. And that is how you get it to to roll out. But this is a fun thing. Like you could get Owen and Luca to do this. Yeah. You can get your whole family. You can have a kid's party where you make pasta together. It's sort of like rolling out worms. Just say, hey, we're going to roll out worms tonight. You know, I had 20 somethings here doing this, having fun. I'm just taking five times as long as you are, but that's all right. Yeah, you're still working on number <laughs> one, right? <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> I think I'm not stretching enough. That's why I'm stopping. We're not timid. stretching I'm enough. I'm too timid. Yeah, so yeah. press, roll, and stretch. Sound, sounds like a workout. Oh, press, better. roll, and stretch. Like, what would that look like? Push, press, then you do a front roll, and then, you stretch it then, you, stre and then you stretch. Yes. 
Okay, have I done one yet in the time you've done 10? Is that um, acceptable? Or yes, that, that's acceptable. Okay. That's fine. The beauty of, of hand-rolled pasta is that it can be imperfect. And the beauty is in the imperfection, in the fact that it might be a little bit fatter on one end than the other. And that's the beauty, you know? It's just wonderful. So I had this dish, this uh, rustic plate of peachy pasta with this, t uh, this uh, beet sauce. I think it was maybe an invention of the chefs. I've never heard. This was in Tuscany, um, outside of Florence, at this little restaurant up on the, in the hills surrounding Florence. And I have no idea. I, I've never seen this dish anywhere else. So I think the chef just invented it. But it was absolutely delicious. And so I came back to the United States, and I immediately tried to recreate it. And uh, Oh, so, so you didn't get a recipe from anyone. You just tasted it yes. and said, I can do that. Yes, yes. I thought, wow, this is really unique. Um, so. Did he clue you in on the basic ingredients or did you just... Well, it was beets. I mean, it was clear. It was obvious. Yeah, he didn't say, I didn't ask him. I just, I tasted it and I thought, okay, I can do this now. I think we put in too much garlic today, but uh, yeah, we, that last, that last bulb of garlic... Uh, but I saw the last bulb. <laughs> yeah, so it was like, uh, <laughs> we have seven, we're fine. It was that eighth. The eighth killed us. Okay, my Apple Watch says, looks like you're working out. Yes. Record Seriously. elliptical workout. Ta da! Two. There's Italian that, that, women somewhere cursing me. That's number three, right? Yes, this is number three. Perfect. All right, we're going to get the water started. Oh, you know what? We're going to saute some greens while yeah. we're at it. Just some fresh chard from the garden. So we're going to just cook these. The sauce is ready. We're going to cook them in boiling water for about two minutes. Uh, combine it with a sauce and then... Uh, It'll be ready. You're laughing. What, I'm, me. What's, I'm laughing oh. at me. That, oh. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we're going to drop some of these in. And fresh pasta doesn't take very long to No. Right. So it'll really be fast. about two minutes because we want it to be really chewy al dente. Usually when it starts to boil, it's about, not boil, when it starts to float like this, it's about ready. Oh, look at that. You see how they're floating? Floating. Mm hmm. Oh, they look so nice. All right, I'm going to take them out. And I'm going to add my sauce. A little bit of pasta cooking water to thin it out. I like to just top it with a little bit of chopped walnuts. Beautiful Valentine's pasta from Tuscany. Shall we give it a try? I would love to. Mmm. Now that it's on the pasta, mm -hmm. it's not too garlicky. Mm -mm. It's delicious. Mmm. Mmm. I get the sweetness mm. from the beet. I get the garlic. I love it. Isn't it nice? It's completely unique. It's completely unique. I love the chewy dense quality of the pasta. It could be a little bit thinner. A little fat even for peachy, but you know what? When you want to indulge, why not have a big fat pasta? Well, thanks for coming today. Thanks for cooking with us, watching. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye.